Good morning. morning. My name is Gail Thackeray, and I was at DEF CON 1. I was the only prosecutor they invited to come who would. And my assignment then was to debate the issues of hacking. And initially, when Dead Addict called me, I told him I don't attend conventions of car thieves either. And later on, we had some discussions, and I did go. It was very interesting for all of us. Um, I got up in front of a very tiny group of people in a very tiny conference room in the old Sands, and I said, there's no debate. You've already lost. Hacking's illegal in 50 states, the federal government, and a lot of other countries. And it went downhill from there. <laughs> so let's go back. Where were we at DEF CON 1? First of all, I am thrilled to see how many women are in the audience. At DEF CON 7, Kevin Mitnick was still on the lam, and the FBI sent an agent to try and capture him if he showed up. And even though Spot the Fed was a big deal as late as DEF CON 7, and they spotted a bunch of feds and trotted them out on the stage, they never got the FBI agent. You know why? She was a girl. <laughs> so what we had at DEF CON 1 were a bunch of cops who were suddenly confronting a world they knew nothing about. Cops were not using computers then. And we had a bunch of hackers, some of whom were doing exploratory, interesting stuff, some of whom were doing very expensive, destructive stuff, which is what led to the prosecutions of the late 80s and early 90s that got all the press attention and that started the debate and led to DEF CON, led to the formation of the Electronic Frontier Society Foundation. And I want to add, for those of you who think that we were always divided communities, I was an early card-carrying dues-paying member of the EFF. <laughs> At the point when DEF CON 1 happened, we had a huge national debate going on. A lot of it was being played out and distorted in the press because we had cops who didn't understand the technology. We had hackers who didn't understand why other people were mad at them. And we had the press who couldn't talk to either of those groups. I remember um, there was a conversation going on on the well. Some of you may remember the well. There was no internet then, so you had to be paying very large long distance bills if you were commuting to the well. And some of the best educated press people in America were asking things like, in Operation Sun Devil, you did 19 simultaneous search warrants across the country. Nobody got arrested. That's why we call them a search warrant. The arrest warrant is when you use the information from your search warrant to arrest the guy who did the bad stuff. We had different factions who could not communicate at DEF CON 1, and that's kind of what led to DEF CON 1, right? We were all really nervous. The hackers weren't necessarily cool with being in the room with the prosecutor. I did have to ask them not to commit any felonies in front of me. <laughs> and the cops were not, at that time, comfortable with being on the stage with a hacker, or even in the same room, unless they were interviewing said hacker. I want to say that 20 years later, we've come a long way in our ability to communicate. This is proof of that. We don't agree on a lot of things. 11, we agree on a lot of things. The fact that this many people here want to hear what the general will have to say in a few minutes is proof that you've changed. The fact that so many law enforcement and security people are here is proof of the fact that we've changed. What we had at the time of DEF CON 1 was mass confusion. The issues weren't all that clear. The factions didn't share a language. Today, we have cops using computers. It was actually law enforcement that pretty much invented the field of computer forensics. I know those early guys, and they were writing code because they were desperate. They needed help. They went to Peter Norton, and they got some tweaks to Norton Utilities, and that was kind of the beginning of computer forensics, the stuff they were writing and what Peter Norton did to assist us. Now, some of you are in the position of protecting the systems that we all rely on, and I think Everybody in this room can agree that whatever we think about the exploratory form of hacking, there is a reliability factor 
that we all depend on in a civil society. And that means that you don't take risks and endanger my stuff. And that was the fundamental divide we had at DEF CON 1. We're still debating it now. As Americans, I don't think most of you who are here are Americans, but we have a lot of foreign guests. As Americans, I don't think most of you would take kindly to a group of hackers from some other country shutting down any of our infrastructure, especially if it affects you. We have evolved in our attitudes towards privacy over 20 years. We're still arguing about it. I know some of you are pretty mad at Facebook about every six months. Privacy is where you feel you're invaded. Hackers didn't, at that time, from my point of view, respect other people's property and other people's privacy. There's a lot of misinformation about those early prosecutions. Um, a couple of the high profile ones that led to DEF CON and the EFF were actually fraud investigations. Huge financial losses were being suffered as a result of some people's behavior. The cops didn't sit around and say, gee, whose civil liberties can we go trample on today? Oh, let's pick hackers. The cops are responsive to a need, a demand from their constituents, which is at some point in our lives, all of us. And that's what happened. We were so trying to solve huge financial losses. You know why we don't have as many hacker cases today? Because you all have internet access for free. You're not running up other people's phone bills. And you're not robbing other people of their credit cards as much. <laughs> we also have better educated cops. We have spent a lot of time training them. It's still not, they're still not where they need to be. They're light years behind most of you. But we have officers, um, the Arizona Computer Forensics Lab at the Anti-Terrorism Center where I now work is a marvelous resource. And we have people who specialize in things that weren't even invented when DEF CON 1 was happening. Phone forensics, that's an oxymoron. There's no forensics with phones. You can't do, for most phones, you can't do a true forensic examination. So we're doing with phones now and with GPS and all the other widgets, what we were doing in a very primitive way at the time of DEF CON 1. One of the legends of the computer investigation commit, uh, early committee, which was a federal loose group, that was trying to teach each other, what is this stuff? How are we dealing with it? What's the law? There's no law. What do you mean there's no law? This is a bad thing. We were involved in all those early issues in law enforcement. We had some contact with members of the hacker community. Um, some of them educated us, not always as volunteers. Um, their interviews were extremely educational. And I'm proud to say that as far as I know, as of four years ago, all of my alumni are really respectable citizens and most of them working in the computer security field. So the hacker community has evolved to become part of the solution and not just the problem. When we look at the evolution, and that's a common theme Dead Addict and I were talking about last night, the evolution of the whole community, not just DEF CON community, but the whole society around us, as the general will talk about, we have more stuff in common than we have disagreements about. You don't want me or any of my alumni shutting down the electricity when you're working on an important project. We don't want other countries taking our stuff, giving it away, so that our brilliant minds, and some of you in this audience actually make money from your skills when you're not at DEF CON, um, you don't want people stealing your stuff. You don't want people data mining your stuff and misusing it. Those are all areas we have in common. And I think DEF CON and EFF have contributed greatly to the shared understanding that brings us all here to listen to the general. So I'm gonna turn this over to Eli. And, oh, sorry, dead Eli. <laughs> dead Eli. <laughs> <laughs> and let him give you the other side of the perspective of DEF CON 1. Just think, when we were here the first time, half of you weren't born, nobody had a computer except the people in the room who were not cops. We didn't have the internet, and we didn't have a conversation going. Look how far we've come in 20 years. Thank you.
first of all, I, I'm, I'd like to thank uh, Jason Scott. Um, if anyone's looked at your DVD, there's uh, a good amount of material, including the uh, uh, tap issues of tap from way back when scanned in, and all those came from textfiles.com. So uh, if you like the sort of thing you, you found on the DVD, um, visit textfiles.com, and uh, I, the community owes him. Uh, he's our historian. So thanks, Jason Scott. So I'd like to talk a little bit about the, some of the motivations um, uh, at DEF CON 1 and why we brought people um, and groups together that hadn't been brought together before. Um, and as far as I know, um, DEF CON was the, the first hacker conference to actually invite law enforcement. Um, this, this was something new. And at the time, uh, I'll be honest, it wasn't... Um, at, at least for myself, it wasn't uh, uh, to try to great, get some understanding of the two sides and to bring everyone together or, or anything like that. Um, we knew they were going to come anyways. They, they actually went to all the hacker conferences and then busted people uh, when they were doing silly, stupid things. So we thought we'd just invite them um, and then all the hackers would know, hey, the, the cops are here. Let's have a weekend free from blatant felonies all over the place. And it's worked out. Um, the, the only arrests that I, I am aware of that have occurred on, uh, uh, at DEF CON over the years have been alcohol-induced uh, um, party-related uh, offenses uh, for the most part. So um, you get 15,000 drunk people together and, and that will happen occasionally. Um, so um, so, so we, we, brought, we brought in uh, uh, Gail Thacker, the most terrifying conversation I, I ever had. Um, uh, when I invited her, she was actively prosecuting uh, two or three very good friends of mine, um, <laughs> in, including one of the DEF CON 1 speakers who uh, uh, wisely changed his talk from security related to, to car repair. It was an awful train wreck of a speech, but he stayed out of jail, so <laughs> that was probably wise. Um, also, we invited the press. That, that was uh, um, a relatively new thing, too. I, I don't think uh, hacker conferences had done that in the, in the past either. So that, that was something new. And, and I sort of, I, 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 I had this uh, idea of a checks and balances system. It was, it was sort of what was going through, through our minds. And it was just me and Jeff planning DEF CON 1. Um, so the idea was, OK, we'll, we'll, we'll bring the, the feds, because they're coming anyways. We'll invite them. Um, and then, in case they do anything ridiculous that we think maybe will violate someone's civil liberties, we'll bring the press there so they can report on that. Um, and that hasn't happened. Uh, um, uh, all, the, all these various stakeholders have behaved uh, uh, relatively well, except for a single undercover reporter a number of years ago. Um, if, if you Google her name, uh, you'll find in the first hits and probably for the rest of that poor woman's life, uh, um, the, the DEF CON related uh, poor judgment. Um, I blame her employer. Um, so we, we, we brought the press in. And um, at the time, the, the press coverage on security issues and hacking issues was abysmal. Um, it was... Um, they were ignorant. Um, the, the stories in the most mainstream publications were, were truly awful. Um, so in, in, addition, in addition to that, we, we thought, well, so bring the, the, the prosecutor, because uh, they're going to come anyways, um, bring the press to cover anything. We should bring some civil liberties lawyers in, uh, in, in case anything bad happens. So we have lawyers on site. Um, and, and while um, there hasn't been any law enforcement action over the years, uh, thankfully, at DEF CON, uh, having civil liberty lawyers around has been a wonderful thing for DEF CON speakers um, because companies often don't like it when uh, we reveal the flaws and, and uh, they like to keep that a secret. And uh, we're not very good at keeping those sorts of secrets, which is why we rock. Um, and so, so the civil liberties folks came and it, uh, turns out that uh, we need protection from the corporations and, and not from the feds, which was a surprise. And uh, I'm, I'm thankful they're here. And um, this year, um, you know, we had the CPSR, originally the Computer Professionals for Social Responsibility, and later the EFF came. And this year, the ACLU is here, as well as the National Lawyers Guild. So there's um, a wide variety of civil liberties uh, groups. And, and, you know, we've been called in years ago um, one of our DEF CON stickers was cut up and rearranged to FedCon, because frankly, there's a, a lot of feds here. 
Um, and you know what? A lot of the feds that are here are hackers, just straight up. Um, so that's okay. That, that wasn't necessarily the case when they first started coming, but it's certainly the case now. And, and there's a lot of folks that work for the government that are really truly part of our community. Um, they're not the other, they are us. Um, and I, I think that's helped. I think that's helped a lot. Um, and, you know, instead of viewing the government as the enemy, um, we just need to infiltrate them and make the government the one we want. <laughs> So the idea was a whole huge set of checks and balances, and uh, uh, it might have been a, a, a silly theory, and it turned out um, uh, we didn't actually have to fear law enforcement as, as much as uh, we thought we did. But also, I think, um, letting everyone know, hey, this is a weekend to party and have fun and exchange information and rampant, obvious criminal activity and multiple felonies. We do that on Tuesday, you know? <laughs> so. The initial motivation was, was that, was, uh, uh, was the checks and balances. What ended up happening was something um, better and different than, than was imagined, and that was uh, a greater understanding of all the various parties, and all of these groups um, understood the motivations of the others and feared the others less. Um, and, you know, now, it, it, and yeah, now we, we kind of get along um, to a, a very large extent. I, also helpful, I think, um, back 20 years ago, there wasn't serious um, mafia criminal organized crime making millions and millions of dollars off from cybercrime. And uh, frankly, the cops have much better things to do than, than to deal with occasional trespass explorations. Um, and again, um, you know, I, I remember when I, I could pay $20 a month and quit being a felon. Uh, that was awesome. I, I slapped down that $20 for an ISP moment I could do that. Um, and, and it's, you know, for, for those that, that weren't there back in the day, it's kind of an odd idea. What do you mean you were a felon to get on the internet? Well, there was no dot .com, there were no ISPs. If you weren't associated with the university, the only way you were going to get onto the internet was essentially um, break some rules. Um, so the press, I think, is interesting. I'm on the press team, so I'll, I'll talk a little bit about that. Um, They've gotten a lot better over the years. Um, Robert X. Cringely was at DEF CON 1 and wrote a little couple blurbs about us. Uh, but over the years, uh, our pre the press presence has grown and grown and grown, and we're over 100 different media organizations are at DEF CON, including every major television network, um, et cetera, et cetera. Um, I'll tell you who's not allowed, though. Uh, there, there is one segment of press that, that tried to get into DEF CON 1 uh, and has tried over the years to get into DEF CON local press. So Las Vegas, anything. I have nothing against the Las Vegas press. It's just generally, as a rule of thumb, local press sucks. So they don't need to come in and we don't want an understanding with them. So uh, I'm sorry if anyone here is with some local press somewhere. I'm sure you do a good job. <laughs> Activists have changed over the years, the nature of activism. Um, EFF is more of a mainstream organization. Um, if you look at what they do, if you look at the content of, of their activities, their lobbying, their lawsuits, all of this, it spans a huge, wide range of activities. And, um, and I um, thank everyone here for supporting them. Um, and I, I found out yesterday that, that Gail was a, a member of the EFF and uh, um, I liked her even more when I found that out. <laughs> so thank you, Gail. Um, from, and, and, and what I really appreciate that actually is having people within the government and within the uh, law enforcement have a deep understanding for the need of civil liberties. And, and that's, um, that's important, and I'm really happy about that. Um, also, I, I, I want to mention uh, something about government in general. Um, people often refer to it as a single monolithic entity. And in fact, there's a ton of different uh, pieces of government, and they have kind of competing agendas, conflicting agendas. Um, for example, the uh, Federal Trade Commission, which is, you know, what does that have to do with anything? Well, um, they actually hired uh, one of us, and uh, um, a privacy advocate and a technologist, uh, and I think he's speaking right now, Christopher Soygen. Um, and, and so, 
there, there are federal agencies that, are, that have the same uh, passion for activism and protecting consumers that some of us do. So, um, and then there's also the FBI, which, like I said, they're busy with actual real scary cyber crimes and uh, nation states and, uh, um, and whatnot. Um, the NSA, um, and, and I'll briefly mention this. I was going to talk about how our interests are, are overlapping. And um, yes, many of us fear the, the NSA in some ways. Um, or, uh, there's secrecy and things unknown about their, both their surveillance capabilities and their offensive capabilities. Uh, so in some ways, you know, we have interest in offensive capabilities too. So there's an interest we share in common. Um, <laughs> But more than that, um, they uh, are, have a leadership role in protecting our infrastructure. And, um, you know, everyone wants an internet so they can play on it. And, um, you know, they've supported uh, um, uh, Linux SE. Um, they've supported various um, hardening um, guides and um, want our, our overall infrastructure to be secure and want to share knowledge to help um, short vulnerabilities, and so uh, in that way, and it's, I'm, I'm very happy, the more public they are with this and the more open they are with that, I think the better defensive posture everyone has. So I think I'm running out of time. Um, thank you all, um, and uh, enjoy your DEF CON.